This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Hey, Open Alliance teams and fans, check out the new Open Alliance, FRC, FTC, and fun themed stickers and pins now available at firstupdatesnow.com slash stickers. We also have new Open Alliance and fun shirts arriving at firstupdatesnow.com slash shirts with free shipping, or head over to firstupdatesnow.com to find all the links. And week six here, welcome into the Open Alliance show. For the first time, stepping on in is Team 74 61 Sushi Squad, one of our uh, featured teams on the Open Alliance, uh, an incredible blog set if you have not checked them out yet uh, and what they've been doing. You absolutely got to be following uh, their blog both on Cheap Delphi uh, and on the FRC Discord as well too. So I have Manav and uh, David here as well too to talk more about their robot progress, what's going on with it. So guys, excited to have you on and have your team on for the first time. If you don't mind, if you can just let us uh, know who you are specifically and what you do on the team. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm Manav. I'm uh, my name is David. I'm the design lead on the team, and I help with the OA posts. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, you, so you're one of the people that big, uh, the hugely think on having some awesome OA posts out there because you guys have just been rocking it. Uh, so, really excited for that. Uh, we're going to be talking about obviously the robot in front of you right now. Might be talking a little bit more into just some scouting. Uh, I know you have a second robot as well too that might end, work its way up here. So, lots of cool stuff to cover. Uh, but we got the big robot in front of you right here. So, talk to us. Give us an overview. We haven't had you on before, so give us an overview of your robot, how it's been going so far, and uh, anything we can show off on it. Yeah, sure. Um, so we have a robot that's basically based on an arm. We like to call it 1.5 degrees of freedom because the arm moves on pivot and also extends pneumatically. And that way we can get it up and all the way over to the um, level three um, cones. Um, otherwise, we have an over the bumper intake that's kind of modeled after a 2022 style intake to pick up cubes from the ground. Um, and then we have a cone ramp, which is for the single substation to kind of just drop cones in and have it go to our arm manipulator on that. Good. Yeah, uh, we're running the STS MK4i module, so we're just running the 28 by 28 drive base for stability. Uh, we chose not to go small just because we needed the stability and we just wanted to cross the field like fast. But that's kind of it. It's, it's a pretty like it's kind of just an arm bot. Uh, our initial alpha robot actually is very similar to this robot in the sense where it is just it is also just an arm bot with an over the bumper intake. But the main yeah. difference is this one has passive and a pneumatic piston. Can you talk to me more about your uh, your pass through in there? I, actually, from a lot of the robots I've seen this year, I haven't actually seen too many robots do a pass through uh, so far. So talk to me more about. I mean, we've seen it in previous years, right? But in this year, I feel like I haven't seen as much. Talk to me about how that process works, or can you like kind of like uh, either shove a cone or a cube through and kind of show us where that goes on your robot? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna enable the robot, so we're gonna back up a little bit. But yeah. Uh, There's no bumpers right now, yeah. so we can just drive into the next cube. Just drive into it, don't touch it. Alright. Okay, never mind. It's okay. We have cube. And then if we lift up the arm. Yes, please. Yeah. So that's kind of it. <laughs> that's a little uh, little intimidating when that arm came out towards the camera, by the way. So that was really cool. Greg, what do you make of the uh, Sushi Squad robot so far? I think I love this robot. Uh, I think it's I think it's I think it's great. I think it's clean. Um, I gotta say, like I was thinking about this, like. Do you think that anybody back in like 2007, 2008, when bumpers were first rolling out, <laughs> ever imagined that like critical geometry on your robot would require your robot it would not work without bumpers on? No. Like that's a, <laughs> no, but, uh, but it's a thing, right? Like, um, but no, it's I think it's really cool. Um, 
So is the way that your, your intake works, so you pick up cones on one side and cubes on the other side? Is that the way this works? Uh, no, so at the moment we have the manipulator on the arm is, I don't think we have anything to demo that with right now, but it's designed so that we can lift up the arm and pick up a cue, uh, cone off the double substation. And then Got it. one thing we're working on that we're kind of having issues with is we purposely with our intake kind of left a gap through here and we're still prototyping getting this to work consistently. Um, but we should from the single substation be able to just drop a cube in and have it hopefully also kind of pass through the manipulator from the front side. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of videos on our build thread and we can do a test, but we haven't done much since the videos that we sent that we posted this like, I think in the like noonish, but if we wanna test it for fun and see what happens, we can. I mean, I'm not gonna say no, yeah, let's do it. Let's we want to see if the box move live. Hmm? All right. Enable what the uh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you could see, but this is one of the issues we're having where we have a series of belts at the bottom and it's kind of getting stuck in the belts. I think at the moment we're thinking of replacing that with um polycarb or like some sort well, of yeah, some sort of flat material at the base that it slides in instead of getting actively driven in. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, in terms of the way we've designed this robot uh, and the archetype we've chosen, um, I'd say that's a lower priority item as opposed to getting a little more consistent with the base functionality. But if you guys are interested, you should definitely look at our build thread in the coming week or so where we try to iron out the issues. So, so I am looking at your uh, your build log uh, right now, by the way, and uh, I saw one that said uh, cube shooting question mark. Uh, so <laughs> is that an actual somewhat legit viable strategy you're looking at doing or is that just for fun? Uh, we're looking into it, but we're kind of trying to figure out if we want to focus on cycling because cycling, like especially at lower levels, is just we're able, like just getting the L3 cycles will be a lot more valuable and getting the drive practice. We're looking into cube shooting because after the auto, like. Once you get deeper into the competition after auto, most of the L3 nodes get filled up. So getting the links and being able to fill up the grid nodes will become a lot more important. So that's why we're kind of looking into keep shooting. Yeah, but that's kind of a side process. Um, like David said, one of our big things, especially with having two robots this year, a goal for us has always been um, drive practice. Um, basically the idea being that we want to get the base functions of the robot functional as quickly and as reliably as possible. Um, and the idea being that even if we were doing a little better, um, like in terms of our cycle time, uh, it matters way more that we can score consistently at competitions in terms of scoring and getting picked. So uh, yeah, that's been a big influence on the way we've chosen to design the robot as well, especially with you know having fewer degrees of freedom and um, having a lot more separated, simpler pieces of functionality. Um, so yeah, one of our, goals there is just getting a lot of drive practice so that we can you know take build simple and then play well and then also just stop uh, staying consistent with scoring instead of trying to over score one so. yeah since this is your your first time on we have we didn't check back with your robot like three weeks ago so the one thing i want to ask you is uh with your your intake uh that you have from the the floor intake uh i like i said i've seen few dozen teams this year and i have to admit like we haven't seen too many of that type of intake most of them are either narrower or like not as like this is something i'd feel like i'd see on a rapid react robot as well too uh when you were looking at translating from last year to this year did that come into play or like what made you really want to go with the super wide intake so in our alpha robot actually uh actually we can probably pull it out uh we wanted to just get done as fast as possible right and we wanted to just stick with that one degree of freedom arm so uh, as a result, actually, let's see if we can, here. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, so we wanted to do a one degree of freedom arm. So what ended up actually happening was we just needed some sort of floor intake to pass it off. And the easiest thing was just to do an over the bumper intake from the rapid, because the cubes were, uh, the cubes are 9.5 inches in diameter, right? So. You basically just do the same intake, the geometry is the same, and it's just convenient, and it just kind of works. Um, another thing with that is over the bumper is nice just because, like you said, touch it, own it. Also because um, 
like I said, when Verbose is consistently reliably scoring, and I think it's just an added piece of functionality where it makes it really easy, even in a worst case scenario, to pick up a cube and if you need to, you know, reverse the intake or something and drop it into hybrid. Well, I'm very much so looking forward to this. I will be out at PNW Sendome uh, in week three, so I am very excited to see this in person, and I can't wait to see your performance. Uh, your robot was fantastic last year, and I'm sure uh, looking for very similar uh, results as well, too. Uh, Greg, before we wrap up on your end, uh, since this is the first time we've had Sushi Squad on, uh, how do you feel their chances are going into week three with their progress so far? I mean, I think it's I think it's awesome. I mean, I, I, I like these kind of robots like this one where it's like it's trying to do – things kind of separate and compartmentalized and you're adding features as you go. And so it's like that way you can, you know, not throw everything all at once. So I'm, I think you're in a, you're in good shape and uh, I look forward to seeing this one advance. I know that you're a, uh, like everybody loves your, uh, your gear. You have the best, uh, you know, some, some of the best swag in all of them. Oh yeah. Uh, in Great. All I think it's called drip now, Greg. I think that's oh, the current drip, not, no yeah. longer swag. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I can't keep up with all these, uh, all these youngins terms. It's like the most boomer thing I've said recently. It, it definitely um, is, but but uh, but uh, it's it's great. Um, so yeah, good luck to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks a lot, Sushi Squad. Appreciate it. And like I said, we'll see you week three. Take care. Yeah. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. FRC Premier Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premier 23. Premier Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premier 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.